Let's take a look at how the law of sines can help us solve triangles. The law of sines says that the ratio of each side length to the sine ratio of the opposite angle is the same for every angle and side length pair. And here we use standard lettering where the corners, the angles, are labeled with capital letters and the side lengths are labeled with the same letter but lowercase. The law of sines can help us solve triangles when the given information is in three specific forms. If we're given two angles and one side, that information can be arranged in an angle-angle side orientation, where I'm given two angle measures and then the side length opposite one of those angles, or angle-side-angle, which is given two angle measures and then the side length in between them, or side-side angle, where we have two sides and then the angle opposite one of those sides. In this video, I want to take a look at the first two arrangements, angle-angle-side and angle-side-angle. Side-side-angle is a bit more complicated to deal with, and I'll save that for a separate video. The law of sines is useful in these three situations because for all three we're given an angle measure and an opposite side length. And so that gives us a complete ratio, uh, one of the complete ratios in the law of sines. And so then with the additional information with this other angle measure, uh, the easiest thing to figure out using the law of sines would be the value for b. So let's see what, what that would look like. So for this first problem, I know that the side length 9 divided by the sine ratio of 81 degrees, that ratio has to be the same as the unknown side length b divided by the sine ratio of 83 degrees. And so we can solve this problem if I multiply both sides by the sine of 83 degrees. That's just some number, so I can multiply both sides by that number. And so from that I know that b has to equal, side length b has to equal 9 times sine of 83 degrees divided by sine of 81 degrees. And so we could figure out what this value is using a calculator. If I enter in 9 and then sine of 83, closing the parentheses to end the, the sine function and then divide by sine of 81. Let me check for a moment that I'm in degree mode, and I am, and then uh, hit enter. And we see the side length. Because 81 and 83 are very close in angle measure, it turns out that the side length B is pretty close to the side length A, uh, which makes sense. The, the value for B uh, is approximately 9.044 centimeters. In order to find the side length for C, we need to first figure out the angle measure for C. But that's not too hard to do because we know that the three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So C has to be what's left over. If I take 180 degrees and subtract the measure of the other two angles, that will give me the, the measure for angle C. So I end up with 180 degrees minus 164 degrees, which means that angle C has to equal 16 degrees. And so then, in a similar way, I can set up a ratio uh, using, and, and it makes sense to use the same original kind of given information here. Um, it, it helps to avoid rounding error if I take that same uh, given information rather than the approximate value that we found. I can take 9 divided by sine of 81 degrees and set that equal to C divided by sine of 16 degrees, which 16 degrees is also an exact value because it doesn't involve any rounding. And then multiplying 16 degrees to the other side, we get that C equals 9 times sine of 16 degrees divided by 
sine of 81 degrees. So turning to our calculator again to, to help us figure out what that value should be, I can enter 9 times sine of 16, closing the parenthesis, and then dividing by sine of 81. We see that the value for C should be 2.512, approximately 2.512 centimeters. So the given information, 9 centimeters, 81 degrees, and 83 degrees, determines the rest of the information about that triangle. And we can use law of sines to figure out what it is. In a similar way, uh, a, a quite similar way, uh, we can solve the angle side angle problem using law of sines. So I encourage you to, to think about that. I'm going to pose this as a question, and then I'll... Uh, the answer will be provided in a, in a separate video. Um, so to get started, these problems are, are very similar, but to get started you want to first think about what the measure of angle B has to be. And then once you have that, finding the side lengths of A and C uh, should be pretty straightforward. So I encourage you to take a few minutes to, to think about that problem before looking at the uh, linked video that has the answer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.